what I think we do is probably let's implement that, but we'll do it when the <laughs> you know you want to say it. Those three most abused words in conference call history. And if you know what they are, maybe it's time to admit it. Your conference call probably sucks. Hi, I'm John Petz, and today we're going to talk about the three most abused words in the history of conference calls. It's typical. You're seven minutes in, you're in the conference call, and right in the middle of someone's sentence, you get it. Bubbleep, and you can't resist. Even if you interrupt the person who's talking, you say it, who just joined. And sometimes we even race to see who can say it first having no concern for what might be going on in that meeting because you just have to know who was the latecomer. And you get the response, hi, it's Merle. Sorry I'm late. What did I miss? That's okay, Merle. I'll tell you what, why don't we go back and rediscuss everything we've done so far so you can get caught up with the whole team. And if you fall for this, then you have fallen for the who just joined syndrome. You're gonna kill the effectiveness of your conference call and abuse the time of everyone else in that meeting. And good luck getting them to show up on time next time. They know they can join late and just catch up on everything. Now, I'm not saying people aren't going to be late or never show up on time. It's going to happen. But here are some things you can do to keep your conference call on track. Suckification reduction device number one. First, keep it simple. Start on time every time. And if you need help with that, go get the book Boring Meetings Suck and look up Starting late sucks. I guarantee the tips on there to get your meeting on time and attendees there on time ready to roll. But let's say someone isn't on the call who has to be there to make the decision. They're an integral part of the team. What do you do? How about give the gift of time to the other attendees? Keep them in the lobby if your conference bridge has that service or just tell the folks who are listening in, hey, put it on mute and put it on speakerphone and I'll get back with you in a few minutes. Then they can get some other things done like catch up on email, which they probably be doing anyway during your conference call. Now, I did say mute and not hold, big difference. They put it on hold and now we all are subjected to a poor rendition of Muzak's leaving on a jet plane and they'll never know when you come back anyway. So make sure it's mute and not hold. If you now find out that your boss or that key person isn't going to be able to make it, then either get permission to make a decision or cancel or reschedule the call. Stop wasting people's time in this conference coffin when there's no real decision making ability. If your conference call system asks you to state your name at the beep, keep it short. First name or last name. Lessen your interruption is the key. Now, if you do come late to a meeting or someone comes late and asks you, what did I miss? Or what happened in last week's meeting? Just email them the call notes right now or tell them, hey, I'll text you the link to the call notes from last week. But keep going. Don't fall into deja vu meeting. Don't fall into deja vu meeting. Well, there you go. Just a couple of quick suckification reduction devices for who just joined. But now it's your turn. I want to hear how you handle it. Post your comments here or share your thoughts at boringmeetingsuck.com. And if you want to learn how to get more out of meetings or get out of more meetings, then pick up or download a copy of Boring Meeting Suck at your local bookstore. My name is John Petz. Thanks for joining me on Boring Meeting Suck TV.